in this video there's gonna be a small challenge and you have to help me you can select which one of these cameras i have to shoot for the next video 12 photos one roll of 120 film what about that Hey, my name is Thomas and the topic of today's video, again something completely different, is basic as can be box cameras or amateur cameras, mainly from the 1940s and 1950s. Um, these are really no frills items with one or two exceptions. Uh, they don't give you any choice whatsoever. Y you don't have any control about the result, basically. That's the charm today. And back then, those were like, if people would want to take photos but don't spend uh, any budget, they would select one of these cameras. So many of these were sold in great, great, great quantities. Should be amazing to find, more, uh, find out more about them, really. Um, these cameras come from a collection of a fr uh, friend's father who recently passed away and he left a huge camera collection. I'm, I'm super excited and really, really happy to be able to have access to that collection now and show you something of it. So let's start with this box cameras. Um, okay, I said box camera, so let's start with this one. This is really a classic box camera. And as you can see, a box camera is called a box camera because it looks like a box. And there's a hole in the front with a lens in it and a very, very, very simple shutter mechanism. There is something to wind your film. This thing takes a standard 120 film, the same sort of film of an analog Hasselblad. <laughs> six by six format photos. And that's it, a viewfinder. Uh, we Germans call this a uh, Brillantsucher, like, yeah, a brilliant viewfinder if you want so. Gives you a 90 degree angle view, so you look at it from here. And it's pretty, pretty bright. Uh, it, it feels like looking into a small marble of glass. There's a small mirror inside, so yeah, you hold it like this and then you shoot. Uh, the shutter doesn't give you any choice except a long time exposure or moment exposure, which should be something around the 1 40th or maybe 1 50th of a second. You never really know. This thing is to open the box to put in the film. And um, oh, you can focus. That's actually already a pretty special feature because most of these cameras don't even have focus. They have fixed focus lenses. Uh, this one goes up to 1.5 meters. Uh, it's uh, quite a royal feature. This may be why it's called the Ducky Royal. <laughs> Made by Dakora in Reutlingen, uh, close to Stuttgart in southern Germany from around 1951 onwards. The next camera now for something completely different. This uh, looks like an item from an old submarine maybe or I don't know, diving equipment from, uh, <laughs> from the steampunk era. Uh, this is called uh, the Barnet Ensign Full View. This is a British camera and as you can see British people like their special, peculiar, unique designs. Doesn't look like any other camera on the world market. Made from 1946 onwards until around 53. Uh, made in England it says. Uh, again you've got the choice between time and instant exposure. It maybe has yeah, you can do this, you know, you can <laughs> you can sort of focus like this. Again, a pretty royal feature, if you ask me. And the shutter, again, this is, you know, these cameras even, ha the shutters are so simple, you don't even need to cock them. You can just fire and fire, and it's your responsibility to think to wind the film in between. Otherwise, you end up with a lot of double or triple exposures. Um, this thing has again a lock unlock thing on the side and then you sort of, where was it? Ay, ay, ay. It's made from stamped sheet metal. Ay, ay, ay. It opens like this. This thing is the film holder. You see the take up spool here and here goes your film and then you know around this. 
and this is just a light tight box with a small lens in the front really like a camera obscura so if you want to learn how a camera works I don't know this is a great <laughs> way to do it and then you have to sort of lock it again which sometimes works Ooh, yoy, yoy. lock okay the barnet ensign um, that brings me to the states We've got this really beautiful and pretty posh and substantial looking Argus Argoflex. Uh, Argus, of course, very, very well known also for the Argus C3. The rangefinder camera that sold, uh, I think they sold four millions of those in the 30s, 40s, 50s. Um, and this box camera was made from 1949 onwards, uh, also in the Argus factory in uh, somewhere in Michigan, in Ann Arbor. Um, this has got a pretty big brilliant viewfinder just like the Ensign. It really feels like looking in a pretty big sort of loop or something. The, the, the viewfinder image of this is amazing bright and clear but it doesn't give you any clue about focusing which doesn't matter because this thing has got a fixed focus lens so you can't adjust anything. Again you can only select uh, instant or time exposure and that's it. However this camera has a very convenient feature you can only fire it when you want the film so there is a guarantee you don't get any double exposures or something of course the winding itself uh, as all these cameras they have this small red window in here so you kind of you know uh, 120 film has a paper back with numbers on it so you just wind and have to look for the number for the next photo super cool made from heavy uh, bakelite uh, plastic feels much more than it is and it looks also super cool I think. Plastic of course was the new thing in the 30s and 40s and 50s. Uh, it wasn't perceived as something cheap as today it was more the material of the future so this again is a plastic camera this is the Bilora Bonita comes from Germany and the, the name Bilora the company stays for Kür B Nigelo Radevormwald uh, Radevormwald is a city close to the Ruhr area in Germany and uh, yeah, Kirby and Nigelo were the two guys who uh, apparently funded this company. Uh, Bilora is still in uh, existence today. They produce plastic materials for the industry or you know, a successful company. Um, back then they also did cameras and of course this is an all plastic camera with a beautiful fake crocodile skin finish molded into the plastic parts. Uh, only the viewfinder cover is simple sheet metal and this front cover um, it looks pretty posh and also a little bit art deco like uh, this uh, Bonita 2 actually it's called uh, was marketed from 1953 onwards and everything else is basically like most of these other cameras but this has even got a adjustable f-stop from f9 to f16 and uh, the uh, you can focus here from two meters to infinity with a small lever. I hope it works because I don't see anything happen here. So maybe it's got some sort of internal focusing. Uh, the viewfinder itself is pretty small compared to the other cameras, but again the same, you know, brilliant sort of viewfinder. It doesn't give you a clue about focusing, but it's pretty bright and clear. And the shutter is here. Again, this fires and fires and fires so you have to think of winding the film don't forget that uh, and here is the adjustment for a moment in time like the others and moment means normally something around a 50th of a second so what you do is in daylight you load it with 100 ISO film put in an f16 uh, on moment and you hope for the best and if it gets cloudy you maybe go to f9 and then you can apparently do night shots like with all of these cameras uh, because they all have a B setting. <laughs> the last two cameras I want to show you today are a little bit different. Let's start with this. This is really the extreme of cheapness. This is so cheaply made I think it's more a children's toy but it works as all the other cameras. It's got fixed focus lens. It says f8 speed is 150th of a second. Uh, again you've got the bulb setting here 
all plastic. The lens is a plastikion lens. <laughs> and um, one of the sm small few metal pieces is used to open this. You see, uh, this is a very small camera compared to the others. Because it shoots smaller film, this shoots the 127 uh, roll film that unfortunately isn't available anymore in contrast to the 120 of course so this really is a shelf queen by today's standards there is no film available and the last camera that's actually hyper luxury doesn't really fit in here but uh, yeah here we go the Lubito 166 Universal the last uh, in the range of Lomo Lubito cameras the first one was uh, produced from 1949 onwards the Komsomolets, the young communist it was called uh, and this last one was made from 83 until 93 the end of the Soviet Union they were all made by the Lomo factory which today sits in Ukraine and of course still produces cameras uh, everyone knows Lomo everyone knows Lomography which is sort of photographic art that evolved around cameras that gave you surprise results due to their shaky quality um, however compared to all these this is a precision instrument it's a real many people use this as an entry into real 6x6 analog photography you've got a 75 millimeter lens f4.5 adjustable aperture adjustable shutter from 15th of a second to 250th of a second plus b so very useful shutter range uh, class normal focusing mechanism um, and the reflex viewfinder however it's not a real reflex viewfinder it's also sort of this brilliant loop sort of thing it doesn't have a matte focusing screen um, but it's got a focusing aid in the center um, sort of micro prism thing so you can really this is a proper twin lens reflex, even though maybe a very basic one. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this particular camera doesn't really work. The shutter is sticky because it wasn't used for such a long time. So it's not part of my contest. Um, and uh, contest is the wrong word, the challenge. Um, the challenge of today is for me to shoot one of these things. Normally I like real cameras let's say like that i like cameras where you've got the full control about everything i'm not used to surprise results from sort of toy like cameras it's really something new for me it pushes me out of the comfort zone and i thought it's maybe fun to try that for a while and maybe it's also fun for you to see the results and how i get along with that thing so i give you the choice the daco the daki royal the ensign full view the beautiful but very very basic uh, Argoflex 75 or the Bilora Bonita. You tell me which camera I shall use for the next video, one roll of film. Write a comment in the comment section below and just name the camera. Uh, or also if you've got any comment, if you know other peculiar funny cameras like this that with, with great uh, wacky designs or whatever, just write something about it if you've got any questions write a question in the comment section i love to read all your comments as you know and i will happily answer every single one of them that's it for today basically um i know small channel notice that i still owe you the video the review of the my optic girl is primo plan 58 that lives on my practica fx2 but now uh yeah i got carried away a bit i was shooting two rolls of black and white from now a roll of color slide film and that one takes three weeks to develop unfortunately so the video is a little bit delayed but I will upload it in the next couple of weeks bear with me um, what else can I say live long and prosper have a great time uh, leave a like subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet and also hit the small bell button for notifications you know the drill and I see you in the next video thanks and bye